All right, so this is part three. I'm talking with Ed Shearer. In part one, we talked about his life moving over here and hooking up with and starting a relationship with a lady boy. Yeah. And in video number two, we were chatting about why he came over here to the Philippines. And then in this video, what we want to cover is his political stances and how... <laughs> Oh, that's turning out for him over here. <laughs> Take it away, Ed. <laughs> well, um, so a little bit of background first of all. I'm from Seattle, very liberal place. I am very much a left of center kind of guy. Uh, and one of the things that uh, I found when I got over to the Philippines is that certainly most of the American expats, and I know I'm painting with a broad brush, but most of the American expats tend to be more on the conservative side of things. Um, and if you happen to be somebody who is left of center and you decide to move to the Philippines, there's a couple things that I think you ought to know. Number one, the level of discourse that we have back in the States when it comes to politics, uh, very divisive in my opinion, very lots of shouting at each other, um, and it can get pretty doggone personal. That's not going to work here. You're going to find yourself pretty doggone lonely if you take that stance here. The conservative stance. No, if you take the stance of being divisive, if you want to, if you want to fight. Now I've got uh, a mutual friend, uh, Kelly Bell, who I disagree with dramatically on most things politically. However, Kelly and I are very civil. We converse. Uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes he's able to tell me things that uh, will change the way I think. Uh, sometimes I tell him things that will change the way he thinks, and it works out because we don't get personal, we don't yell at each other, uh, and I can think of, I don't think, in, I don't think once when we have been actually in face-to-face -face conversations that politics comes up. Right. And I think that's really important to recognize. Uh, this is not America. Uh, the Philippines, if you know. Our friend Bud Brown, I mentioned him before, Bud gave me some great advice when I moved over here. He said, they do things differently in the Philippines. You need to be patient and flexible. If you want this place to be like America or Australia or Great Britain or wherever you're from, the only piece of advice I give is stay there. Because that's the only place you're going to find that. The Philippines is the Philippines. And if you can't be open-minded and accepting of what it does, what it is, it's going to be pretty grim. So you, do you define yourself as a liberal? I would say that I, yeah, I, I think if we were to use that, uh, that kind of terminology, I'd be a liberal. Okay. So, but if you have conflicts with people about that, isn't that primarily on, in discussion groups online? Absolutely. So when you meet these guys in person, no, we There's never no have no foul. Yeah, we have n not have these conversations. I mean, people, you know, sitting behind the keyboard, you know, you're looking to do something, and uh, my conservative friends, me as being more liberal, we're an easy target to uh, to, to do some stuff, right? <laughs> I was surprised when I got over here at how conservative everybody is. I, I happen to be a conservative also, but. I'm not a political guy, so I don't like all the Trump discussions. Right. Obama, right. this, that, and the black, white, me, and the movements, and all that. That's just, to me, it's just all fluff. You know, it's just it's just one nonstop argument, and I get bored with it. Right. So, but you seem to engage in it. You like it. I do, because it keeps me, you know, I wouldn't have moved to the Philippines unless I wanted to be exposed to something new and different. There right? you go. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and uh, having friends, good friends, who are conservative uh, has done just exactly that. It's exposed me to something new and different. That's true. That's true. You know, if you do run, 
that's another that's another uh, mouse wheel I think that we get on in, when we're living in the states is we've, we've we've fallen in love with our favorite news channel and right. we've fallen in, uh, into a pack of people that are like thinkers and we just that's why it turns into Groundhog Day right because when you sit down at the golf course with your buddies there in Scottsdale, Arizona, or wherever you are, and you're having your, your beer after a round of golf, everybody's in agreement because you guys are in the same foursome every Sunday, you have the same conversation, and then you come out here and maybe you post somebody, and then a guy like Kelly will just reach out and bitch slap you right. and <laughs> tell you, <laughs> no, right. this is what I think. Right. And the cool thing about him is he backs everything up with facts. Right. And he, he doesn't just talk from the hip, right. he isn't just talking to you from an emotional standpoint. He is a patriot and right. he loves his country deeply. And he has, uh, his, his opinions are, are true and close to his heart. He believes them, he's not afraid to express them. And so you're right. I mean, he can take you from one end to another because he does back it up with facts. You bet. As opposed to just regurgitating something that they heard five minutes ago on CNN or Fox, whichever side they're on. So I agree. I know. think that, and I think you touched on something, Paul, that's really critical. Yeah. For me, anyway. Um, if I if I hear somebody's political discussion. Uh, and because I know them, I know that they love their country, yeah. as do I, yeah. uh, then they've got credibility in, in terms of their discussion points. Yeah. I may disagree with them. Sure. You know, there's facts all over the place, and sure. I tend to be pretty factual when it comes to uh, my comebacks to guys like Kelly. But uh, the reality is, I always keep right, right here that uh, this guy I'm talking to loves his country just as much as I love mine. Well, one thing about about facts and uh, and verification, I just want to do kind of a disclaimer here on the channel. Nothing I do is verified or fact checked. <laughs> Fair point. Fair point. And Ed can Ed can tell you that nothing I do here is scripted or pre-planned. We didn't write out a bunch of questions. We just agreed to have a conversation. Indeed. And as two guys that are friends and talk about our lives. And I want to thank you for sharing the fact that you were, you were able to, to open up about your, your relationship uh, with a lady boy. Uh, we discussed, uh, well, we touched on the subject of what motivated you to come out here and then some of the experiences that you've had since you've been here. Mm -hmm. And so to sum it up, your experience in the Philippines on a scale of one to ten, or however you want to define it. All right, well, I will, I will tell you, I think that, I mean, I'm really enjoying my time here. Okay. My plan for subject revision is that I'll spend eight months a year here, four months back in the States. I, I, I talk to my kids a lot by phone and so forth. Yeah. But I want to give them a hug. Sure. Uh, you know, I want to sit down with them at Thanksgiving and you know and, and and do those sorts of things. So the way I've looked at it, and I'm going back in September, and then we'll be back here at the end of December. Uh, the ideal scenario that I'm searching for is that. Uh, when I get ready to go back to the States, I'm pretty darn excited about it. When I get ready to come back to the Philippines, I'm equally as excited about it. That's a very cool way to be. Well, and I think that that's really important. Um, if you are, if you're somebody who is a glass half empty or a negative kind of guy, just changing your location ain't going to change who you are. Um, and if you're a positive guy, you're going to find the good in the it's not to say that there's not plenty of stuff that's not good at the yeah. um, but you'll deal with it just like you deal with it in, in, in the States or wherever you're from. Uh, you will take the good and be aware of the bad, but not let it define your life. Right on. Well, Ed, you know what? I want to thank you for, 
for being with me today. I think this was really informative. I hope you guys liked it. And um, it sounds like you've got it planned out pretty good. Well, any plan is subject to revision. Hey, you know how to make that laugh? How's that? Tell them your plans. Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. No hey, kidding. subscribe to my channel. Talk to you later. Thanks. Bye. Bye.